as Garth mentioned, my name is Kieran. Uh, I work for Liberty IT. Um, I primarily work in application security and infosec and secure development and all that sort of thing. I think when Garth asked me to do this talk, he thought that was what I was going to talk about. But uh, I decided that would be boring because I already know about those things. Um, this was really more of an opportunity to make it seem to go out and actually learn something new, force myself to learn something new by agreeing to go and talk about it. Which leads me into my first big, my big important disclaimer, which is that I am not a DevOps expert. I did this so that I could go out and learn, okay, what is the current coming edge of DevOps and figure out for myself what the, I thought the future of DevOps was going to be and what of those technologies were going to take off. I'm not some big wise owl standing up here preaching to you all about the important things. Uh, there are things I'm going to have missed, which, like, uh, there is time for questions at the end of the, if people have really great technologies that are coming that I haven't included, then do feel free to call mine for people. Um, so, but uh, I did do an awful lot of reading into what the future of DevOps was, though. Uh, what was interesting to me is that about 90% of the people writing articles about the future of DevOps turns out the future is exactly the thing their company is selling, which is very lucky for them. But half the rest of them said the future of DevOps was containers. It's like containers have been around since 2013, so it's a bit of a back to the future. Um, so when we talk about DevOps, this is really the sort of thing that people think about the most, which is code delivery pipelines. Uh, the, so, uh, this isn't really a futuristic thing for most people, hopefully. I think virtually everyone is pushing their code out to production in an automated way nowadays. That being said, I think uh, full-on automated code delivery and continuous delivery where you don't have any manual checks and so on is virtually impossible for anyone except people who are working in a single product shop like Netflix or the like, or people who are delivering complete top of the stack uh, web client things. If you're working in a big, broad enterprise ecosystem like a bank, where you've got thousands of different little applications with hideous interdependencies, then you do need some sort of manual check and you do need to have some sort of staging so that everything, all the changes go out at the same time and so on. That being said, the great thing about continuous delivery as a goal is that even if you don't make it all the way to it, every step you take on the way has value. Like you're adding more automation, you're adding more stability, you're taking more effort out of things for people, and so even if you only get part of the way to it, it's still worthwhile doing it. So there's an awful lot of innovation going on in code delivery pipelines, a lot of cool stuff with containers and so on. But that's not what I find the most interesting about where DevOps is going. I kind of find it more interesting where it's being applied outside of the standard code delivery pipeline. Uh, for example, uh, pipelines that are make pipelines. So again, one thing that happens in, in any sort of like large organization that's doing DevOps is you start to realize that you've got all these code delivery pipelines you need to have some form of standardized way of setting them up because in order to be able to have support for them, in order to be able to have some kind of consistency, to be able to move people between teams. Even though you want to empower your developers and give them a set of tools they can work with, you don't want to have them just completely setting everything up from scratch. Plus, you want to speed up getting your project set up and you want to speed up getting things set up and going. Uh, which leads into the obvious question like, okay, if you're automating setting up your pipeline when you set up a new project, why don't you just automate everything else at the same time? So this is an example of a project generator. This is from Atomist. And the idea of this is that you tell Atomist, hey, I want a Spring Boot application with a MySQL database and front-facing API with OAuth security on it and it goes away, finds a seed project that roughly matches that, runs a bunch of scripts on it to make it actually match that, sticks it into a GitHub repo for you, sets up a pipeline with some boilerplate tests and some hello world code in there, 
and you're up and able to start coding pretty much straight away. You don't have to go through two days of setting all that up yourself. Now, this is something, again, is good for the big organizations because it improves standardization and it makes things more portable for people, but it's also an absolute necessity if you want to do microservices properly because microservices is all about having independently deployable uh, services that each serve a single purpose. If it becomes difficult for people to set up a new service, they're going to give in to the temptation to just say, oh, well, this is kind of like that, and I'll plug this functionality on it. Next thing you know, you've just got monoliths with a bunch of APIs, which is pretty much what happened to SOA, and is what microservices is trying to avoid. So, another type of pipeline that's out there that I find kind of interesting is uh, DBOps, database ops, or DBOPS, as I honestly really prefer calling them. Uh, so what's interesting about this is that uh, DevOps actually came out of the database world originally. That's where the whole idea of like automating things and uh, getting that consistency and being able to deploy exactly the same thing in dev as you do in production. It grew out of the need for that in the databases world and then DevOps was let's apply that type of automated thinking to coding. And then DevOps is just let's take that DevOps thinking and apply it right back to databases. So this is an example of a product that's out there at the moment from a company called Redgate. It's called SQL Change Automation. The interesting thing to me is that like, if you look at it, this doesn't look that different from a standard coding delivery pipeline. It's got the same idea of like, okay, you've got source control, you've got your integration, you've got deployment. Under the covers, there's a lot of different things being done, but it gives you the same reassurances on the surface. So that's an interesting thing, is like that it's okay, you're solving the same problem, but in a different way because it's a different uh, landscape that you're doing it on. So another type of pipeline, this is actually what really started me thinking about these different types of pipelines because I saw a talk about this back at uh, AppSec EU last year, is the security testing pipeline. So this is a, a template that uh, a WASP use for their gas pipeline. And the idea of this is rather than putting your security testing into your code delivery pipelines because there's problems with doing that where you want to do full stack testing or it slows your pipeline down and that sort of thing, uh, you actually have a separate pipeline with your security test in it and that gets kicked off by your code delivery or it gets kicked off sequentially. Uh, it runs your security tests and then it pushes the results of those tests up to whatever defect management tool you have, like def oh, Wasp use Defect Dojo because that's their uh, security defect management tool. Um, so uh, it's a fairly straightforward idea which makes it surprise me that people haven't really come up with it before this. Uh, what really surprises me is that I haven't seen any examples of this being done for performance testing because performance and load testing has exactly the same problem of like, oh, it's difficult to do it in the regular pipeline and you want to be able to do it separately. But I couldn't, I did search a good bit and I couldn't find any examples of people doing dedicated perf testing pipelines. I think people are doing them in companies and they're doing them sort of like <coughs> internally, but no one's really confident enough to talk about it in public yet. So, which is interesting. Uh, the last, uh, pipeline that I want to talk about is or application of DevOps outside of the pipeline is machine learning ops, ML ops. Uh, so this is something that's even that's in a fairly larval stage. Uh, this diagram comes from uh, Alejandro Sacedo at the Institute of Ethical Machine Learning and this is from a talk he gave last year about uh, basically just applying DevOps principles to machine learning. And he, for him, and DevOps is one of those things that means different things to different people, but for him it meant uh, applying uh, the principles of reproducibility and orchestration to machine learning. Uh, so reproducibility meaning that, okay, we can go back to where we were a week ago if it turns out that all the changes we've made have made things worse. And that's obviously fairly something that we solve with source control in coding. 
Uh, but in machine learning, it's much more about versioning your data, versioning your models. Uh, but again, it's like it's the same problem, you're just solving it in a different way. And it's the same thing with orchestration. It's just like, okay, putting your model out there in a consistent manner and being able to take human error out of the equation when you're doing it, which, again, means a different thing in that space. So his line was, I think, it was it's exactly the same as CICD, except it's completely different. Uh, so that's that, that's a roundup of a bunch of those pipelines. But uh, what can they tell us about the future? Like, where can, where where does that leave me thinking that DevOps is going to go from this? Well, some of it have kind of laid out in there. I think there's a lot of stuff that people are doing internally that they're going to start. It's going to start becoming a commodity. So things like the performance testing pipelines. Uh, I think MLOps. You're going to start seeing more products offering that type of functionality, and actual companies building that out. I think like the DevOps is going to become the thing that just like people are going to assume it's going to be as common as just automated code delivery and production. People are going to think there's something weird about your company if you're not using the pipeline, your databases. But really, uh, for me, like the, the main trend or the main important thing that I'm seeing in DevOps, and for me, what DevOps is about is information hiding and saving people from complexity. Because like, people talk a lot about DevOps empowering developers and giving them some like, control over their code, but that doesn't mean that you just like dump the entire stack on them and expect them to set everything up themselves. So a full stack developer doesn't mean someone who codes the entire application themselves because you never get anything done. Really what you want is to empower them by giving them the power to do things, but uh, hiding away all those bits that they don't need to care about. And that's what DevOps is doing. That's what you're doing with things like uh, having these code delivery pipelines so that, or project setup pipelines so that uh, your developers don't need to go through the effort of doing all those things every time. Or, uh, uh, I'm being given a two minutes, so I'll skip forward to the last bits. So, um, the question then is, like, we've got all these different bits going on and all these different connections, but we want to make it as simple as possible. And how can we make a complicated problem simple? And, well, we're developers, we use code. So, uh, this is the job management system for Kubernetes. It's called Prow, and it's basically just... Uh, it's got a lot of nautical metaphors in it, but what it's really about is just expressing those types of job interactions you want to go on behind the scenes that your developers don't have to worry about in code and having them and being able to like treat them as code. Because the real secret of pipelines and the real secret of DevOps is that um, they're just applications. They're just like applications like anything else. So. You can apply the same type of thinking to them that we're applying to applications. Which is the last thing I want to talk about is uh, Jenkins X. And this is a very new tech. This is something that was announced back in April, I think. And it came out in beta back in October. Uh, beta meaning that it's available for a very thin range of tech stacks. But it is out there. And the idea with it is it's serverless Jenkins. It's applying that type of thinking of, and obviously like real serverless, there are real servers, but uh, it's applying that type of thinking where you specify the type of server you want, it gets spun up when your pipeline runs, and then it gets wound down after. You're not left sitting waiting for the one build agent that can handle Ruby and Node at the same time. And, yeah, so get the times up, but very quickly just I would say like go out and look at this project if you're at all interested in DevOps, not just for what they're doing, but for how they're doing it, because like they're very much uh, a believer in doing what they say that you should do.